You know, people don't realize. And, and as we were worshiping, I, I saw, because, you know, spirit means breath. And the word says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, right? It says that as we draw near to him, he draws near to us. And as we were praising and worshiping and praising and worshiping, it was like I could see the breath of the individuals. The harder they sang, the, the further it went. Does everybody understand it? The weaker they sung, it stayed close. See, Jesus was over there waiting to get touched so he could touch. And I saw the breath. And as people continued to praise and worship, the harder they praised and worshiped, the further it went. When it touched him, he touched you. But the ones that it didn't get, didn't reach, didn't go out well, maybe a foot. Uh-huh. 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 You know what I'm saying? It was like, man, what the heck is that? Uh-huh. It was a deaf and dumb spirit. Man, I'm telling you, some of us were going across the room. Whoa! Jesus is going, you! Touch him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sometimes he plays hide and seek. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or, 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 you know, did you ever see those things when you go to the circus and, they, and you got to shoot it? He'll, he'll cruise around, and you got to hit him. Jesus! I love you! Oh, I missed. I'm going to get you. So you got to keep going after him. That's chasing him. Because when you hit him, he hits you. And then snap, crackle and pop, and you be made new. <laughs> Glory. Anyways, I thought I'd share that vision. <laughs> uh, John chapter 15. <laughs>you know, we have to stay drunk in these days, man. You know what? When you're drunk, nothing bothers you. And you ain't got to go pay for it. The price you pay is worship. Like right now, people that are really filled and, and blessed and drunk, they don't care about nothing. In fact, your past just disappeared. All the things that were bothering you today is gone. <laughs> oh, glory. <laughs> now, don't pick up nothing. Amen? Don't pick up nothing. Sheesh. Whew. I'll tell you what. He's good. Ain't nothing like the real thing. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. <laughs> yes. John 15. Did I say that yet? Good. In verse 1, let's speak it together. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may what? Bear more fruit. Hmm. Okay. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Powerful. Pruning. What is pruning? It's cutting away lifeless, 
unwanted parts. It's cutting away lifeless, unwanted parts, useless parts. Amen? Amen. Why? So that we can become more fruitful and increase. Same thing when you prune plants and whatever. The purpose of it is to cut away things that are interfering. Deadless, th dead things and whatever. Why? So it can become more fruitful, fuller, because it increases. And that's what God does with me and you. But there's a special way he does it. To prune is to bring, how does he prune? Through trials of purification. Everyone say trials of purification. That is pruning. So if somebody comes in and says, man, are you a prune? No, I've been pruned. Why? Do I bear fruit? Yes. And there's people that haven't been bearing too good of fruit. You can let them know you're going to get pruned. Amen. James chapter 1. Our famous scripture. Trials of purification. How many of y'all, God wants us to become more and more pure? That's called holy. And especially in these days right now where people are just off the wall. I mean, just saying whatever they want. I'm, I've seen Christians proclaiming Jesus and then all of a sudden every word is profane. I've had to turn off certain things that I thought were, you know, certain websites that I was getting information. All of a sudden, the individual changed. I'm like, man, I'm done with this. I don't want to hear that. And we're beginning to see more and more because there's a... a a separation in the body. There's going to be the headless body and the ones with the head. Those who live out of the spirit and those who live out of the carnal mind. Two different things. Because they are still carnal. And you know where it comes out of? Their mouth. That's how you know they're still living out of their carnal mind. James 1 verse 2. Let's speak it. My brethren counted what? All joy. <laughs> yeah. When you fall into various trials. Now the trials aren't always the same. Amen. Amen. Even though sometimes they do kind of repeat, don't they? Why did they repeat? Because you didn't get it the first time. But he says, count it all joy. Why? Because you were miserable the last trial you went through. You were blaming everybody else for it. You wouldn't take your own responsibility. And you reacted instead of responded. Let me tell you, react means repeat. Amen? React means what? Repeat. Response means advance. Oh, yeah. So count it all joy. Verse 3 says, Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, which means endurance. So you are being tested on your connection with him. Remember that always. Because faith is connection. You are always being tested. Let me tell you, the enemy will test you on your connection. Because he's always trying to get you disconnected, isn't he? If he can get you to react, you sow in the flesh and you reap corruption. And when you react, you what? Repeat. Patience is endurance. But let patience have its what? Perfect work. Is anybody waiting on something? 
Boy, you don't have to raise your hand. Everyone does. It's a part of God's process. But let patience have its perfect work. That you may be what? Perfect. Perfect. And what? Complete. And what else? Lacking nothing. Wow. That means you are stable. And if any of you lacks wisdom, why? Because he said you're going to need some wisdom on this. Wisdom is allowing you to see things through. Remember, wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. But it's not of the world. It's from God. It's through the Spirit of the Lord. So if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. But make sure, and he gives it willingly and without reproach, and it will be given to that person. But make sure, amen, amen. that you ask in faith. Why? Because faith is connected, but it says this, when I ask, I know I have it. I don't know how, I don't know where, and I don't know when, but I have it. Amen? Amen? With no doubting. Doubting severs everything. Whatever you've asked for, if you doubt it at any time, it's gone. You have to reconnect on that again. Now, some of us may go into that place, gosh, Lord, when? doesn't mean doubt. When? There's nothing wrong with a when. I doubt he's going to answer you. Because <laughs> he usually doesn't tell you when because he's a father that likes a surprise. But he does tell you if something's coming that's going to harm you or mislead you or distract you. He said, look, at this is coming. Amen? He warns us. So he says, make sure that you ask without doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. For he is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. So we are to go, fall in that place of joy. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Remember, trials are to test our connection. So we don't get moved out of position. Doubting will always move us out of position. God is faithful. He wants to get us to that place where we know that he's faithful to complete what he started. We want to enter a position with endurance where you and I are always saying, I'm going to trust, I'm going to rest in him, and I'm going to wait on the next command. I'm going to trust in him no matter what's going on. No, uh, what, why do you, look, at trust says no to feelings. When you say trust, you're saying no to your feelings. Oh, feeling. You got to put feeling under your feet. Trust says no to feelings. Rest means I'm resting on what he said. And I'm waiting for him to release what is supposed to be coming to me. Somebody get it? Oh, hallelujah. This is the wisdom that we ask for so that we may see things all the way through. When we go into this place in position with endurance, with trusting, with resting, and waiting, the result is stability. What is the result? Stability. So that you are able to stand no matter what. But when we react in a circumstance, what does that cause? Repeat. Your trial will come around again. There is no advancement in reactions. There's only advancement in responses. That doesn't mean God doesn't give up on us. It doesn't mean he hates us. Amen? But he's trying to get us to a place where we can get more things done. That's what he says. I want you to become more fruitful. In Titus chapter 2.
So whatever you're going through, praise God. <laughs> you're going to go through it. So what is he doing tonight? He's giving us the formula to get through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Titus chapter 2 is just for you. Verse 11. What's the word grace mean? God's plan of escape. Remember, he's always making a way of escape. Verse 11, Titus 2. Let's speak it. For the grace of God that brings what? Salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and do what? Purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. That's why they're called trials of purification. Trials of what? Purification. Denying ungodliness and worldly loss. It will take trials of purification. It just isn't a pill you take and you're purified. It doesn't matter how many showers you take, how many detox drinks you drink. This purification is spiritual. It is not soulish or physical. It is spiritual, although it is cleansing of the soul. Amen. So denying ungodliness and worldly lusts will take trials of purification to purify. Why is he doing this? Because he's purifying for himself a special people. That are what? Zealous for good works or divine works. They are zealous for them. They are zealous for his presence. They are zealous for divine fruits, divine conduct, and a divine nature. They desire it. They look forward to it. They want this. It's not something that they force to do. It's something that they want to do because they've made connection with the divine creator. You can't force someone to love God. In fact, he doesn't force us to love God. You can't force someone to obey. Amen? Amen. But God draws us. The problem is, is, even when he draws us, people still reject. And connection is made by how you worship. Psalm 119. People, so I, I hear people say, how come the Lord didn't touch me the way he touched this person? Probably because you're mumbling your words. You were playing religion. You weren't going after him with all of your heart. You didn't make connection. You were thinking about something else. You didn't leave yourself. <laughs> So you got to leave yourself. Psalm 119, starting at verse 1. What does it say? Blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Why are they undefiled? It's called purified. Amen? Because they've gone through trials of purification. Now they will become undefiled. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. They have, com you have commanded us to keep your precepts, what? Diligently, that's an area where you are consistent. Consistent. 
You desire to connect. You are zealous for his presence. You know that you can't live without his presence. You are allowing, you know that the trials, tribulations are for purification. Because there's two things that also happen in your trials and tribulations. Not only is it burning and purifications, but it's exposing your enemies. Amen? But so many people get so caught up in self when the trouble comes that God is exposing their enemies and they don't even see it. Because their eyes have been taken off of everything else and put on themselves. Woe is me. Look at what I'm going through. Oh my God, the devil's standing over there. Another one here, another one here, another one here, another one here. And they're just speaking at you, beating you up, and they're kicking you all around. And you're just, oh gosh, and they're telling you all kinds of stuff to say, and you're saying it, you're saying it, and you're reacting, you're reacting, you're reacting, and you're repeating, and you're repeating, and you're repeating. So you get your eyes off of yourself. Amen. Amen. One of the things that brings you to you is fear. Fear will bring you to you. Always. Oppression brings you to you. Well, actually, that's a fruit of fear, is oppression. You know why people, look, did you ever hear anyone say procrastination? Every one of us has been accused for that. You know why procrastination comes? Fear. Amen? Amen. It's nothing but fear. When people procrastinate, it's because we've gotten caught up in fear. Fear of what? Fear of whatever it is. Fear of man, fear of failure. Some people are fear of success. Fear of even making a change. They might want to make a change, but they're afraid to. Amen? So the undefiled are purified by trials. Why? So that we can walk in his ways. Walk in his ways. Listen, we are walking as ways of designation because he's designating things for us. Amen? And we're all, not only is it designation, but it's sanctification. We're being separated as a special people. How many know oh, God came to bring life and life abundantly? But see, so many times people get caught up in so much stuff of themselves that they can't see through. Remember, we are not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting powers of darkness, Amen. demons, big and little. <laughs> Amen? Doesn't matter. And they carry a voice. And they carry a presence. And they have feelings. So we got to kick their butt. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. So in this, undefiled is a representation of purified by trials. Why? So that you and I can walk in his ways of des designation and sanctification, always maintaining an attitude. See, this is where the kicker is, the attitude. We maintain an attitude of trust, of rest, and of weight. Why? Because we refuse to be disconnected from his presence and his word. We refuse to. That's what fear does, doesn't it? Doesn't it nullify faith? Well, fear, if it nullifies faith, then fear will disconnect you. And it brings you to you. Oh, hallelujah. Trials of purification. Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5 <laughs> and verse 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son today, I've begotten you. As he always says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So in the, in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by things which he suffered. How many know that trials and tribulations are sufferings? 
Yes. So he learned obedience by trials of purification. You and I learn obedience by what we go through. That's how we learn. Amen. Why? Because we usually go through something because we blew it. We were not obedient. And it says, I went astray because of, and then afflictions came when I went astray. Amen. Either you missed it, something happened, something occurred. Not every, not every time. Sometimes God's trying to show you something because you're missing something. Amen. So our trials of purification are so that you and I can learn obedience so we do the things the first time and not wait to the second and third time. Amen. Obedience through suffering. These are trials of purification and they are for perfecting. Has everybody got it? They're for what? Perfecting. Ooh, yes. Look at, um, look at in verse 9. It says, And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who what? Obey. Obey him. Obey him. So without trials, you can't learn obedience because it's a part of suffering. Hebrews 12. You ever been lied to? You ever been burned by someone? Hopefully you learned your lesson. Amen? Amen. Someone never stole something from you? So you lend somebody money, they said they would pay it back, and they never did? In the kingdom, you forgive and you bless. You don't take them to court. God does. <laughs> does everybody get it? Who does? God does. Hallelujah. Now, um, you know, there are certain circumstances if, you know, somebody's trying to run you over and kill you. Praise God. Hebrews 12 and verse 5. Let's speak it. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons and daughters. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. How many of you all chastening the suffering? Yes. So don't despise it, nor be what? Discouraged or disappointed when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chases and scourges every son whom he receives. Nobody escapes this. Why? Because he's tearing you from the worldly ways. The worldly thoughts. The worldly attitude. The worldly motive. The worldly desires. The worldly loss. He's tearing us away from If you let him, you can run from him. But you can only run so long. He catch you. <laughs> he always catches you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, verse 7. It says, if you what? Endure. Wow, there's that endure again. It's called that patience. If you endure the correction, God deals with you as sons. Now, if you reject the correction, then he lets you go. He says, we'll meet again. soon or later. <laughs> For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we've had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and what? And live, for they indeed for a few days chastened us as though it seemed best to them. But he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. That's called trials of purification. Because purification is holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful. But that's a choice, soul. Right? 
It's a choice. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful, nevertheless, after it what? Yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been what? Trained. So it's a part of our training. So stop running to the phone and start running to the throne. And don't tell everybody what you're going through. So what? Only he can fix you. Nobody else. Oh, pray for me. I'm going through this. Oh, pray for yourself. You wimp. You fight through. Hello? A lot of wimps in the kingdom. I'm telling you. <laughs> Chastening is trials of purification so that you and I can yield the righteous fruit. Amen? Amen? It's training. Why? Till we get to that place where we no longer react, we what? Respond. What does respond do? Advances. What does react do? Repeat. Repeat. Some people need to be named repeat. Hey, repeat. Romans 8, please. Romans 8. Oh, hallelujah. How time flies when you're having fun. Romans 8, 18. You know, you think about some of the causes of our trials. Sometimes it's unfulfilled vows without repentance. Sometimes God is trying to say, look at, I, I need you to repent for this and the person's not willing to repent yet. Amen? Could be sin. Could be because of a motor mouth. Busy bodies. Again, unrepented issues, uh, desires, worldly desires, more worldly desires, some kinds. God, God is always trying to expose something. Maybe something we keep saying we're going to do and didn't do. Amen. He said, like, okay, I have to bring you through this again. Sometimes people slack up. They, they drift away from that zealous desire to worship him with all their heart and he brings us through a trial why to bring you back to put you back in line <laughs> or sometimes to break us loose from idols remember fire the fire of god when we ask for the fire of god that burns up that's purifying the anointing breaks the yoke the fire burns <laughs> In Romans 8, verse 18, let's speak it. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The glory that shall be revealed. Whose glory? His glory. So he's trying to get it out. But we be in the way. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. That's phenomenal. Even all creation is waiting for me and you to pop. For the creation was subjected to fertility and not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also be revealed, will be delivered from the bondage of corruption to the glorious liberty of the children of God. That's me and you. That's wonderful. So our child's of purification, which is suffering, knowing the end result is regeneration and transformation. The end result is what? Regeneration and transformation into what? His image and likeness. Why? Because we are tested eternal citizens. Regeneration and transformation into his image and likeness. Why? Jesus was the sure example. He trusted in the Father. No matter what he went through. Everything he said, I didn't come to do my will, my Father's will. Everything was acknowledged about the Father's will. 
in 1 Peter chapter 5. Trials of purification. Oh, yes. I believe we're all in them. And when you come out of this one, you go into another one. It doesn't stop. Until you become him. So I'll see you when we get home. <laughs> First Peter chapter 5. Yes. In verse 8, be what? Be sober. Be what? Vigilant. Oh, yes. So that means be alert and be what? Consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may deceive or devour. Amen. Or bring fear. Or get out of position. Or bring that person to them. Resist them steadfast in the faith that's in your connection. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So everybody's going to go through it no matter what. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you suffered. Which is trials of what? Purification. After you've gone through them. You will be perfected. You will be established. You'll be strengthened and you'll be settled. You'll be settled in the character, in the divine conduct, in the divine nature. You'll be settled in the place where your attitude is pleasing to him. And he can trust you. Isn't that the ultimate goal, to earn God's trust? This is what we all must ask ourselves every day in our examination. Am I doing the things that I, God trusts me? Am I doing my own thing or am I doing his thing? Am I actually acknowledging him? Am I actually seeking him? Am I going after him with all my heart? Am I, am I really zealous for his presence? Am I zealous for his house? Am I really zealous for the things of God? Or do I do things? How can I say it? Uh, there's a word I want to say, but I don't really want to say it. Half donkey? <laughs> Amen. People do it half donkey, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Anyway. First Peter chapter four. Yeah, they sound like one too. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. Let's speak it together. Beloved, don't think it what? Strange. Strange. Concerning the fiery trial. What does fire do? Purifies. Yes. What's the anointing do? Breaks. Beloved, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. Where, and that's where you get into a place, oh, I'm the only one this happens to. No, you're not. No, you're not. But rejoice. Hallelujah. Look at that. Rejoice. It says rejoice. To the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Now, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of the glory and of God rest upon you. On their part, he's blaspheming, but on your part, he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief. That's not Christ, you know what I'm saying? That's not Christ's sufferings. That's self-imposed sufferings. As an evildoer or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin in the house of God. And if it begins with us first, 
What will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? And that's happening now. I'm telling you that there is a move and a sifting that God is allowing in the body of Christ. He's allowing it because he is getting ready to bring judgment on the earth. I'm not saying it's coming today or tomorrow, but why does he bring judgment? To expose. So people have an opportunity to change. Why? Before his wrath comes. Because nobody escapes the wrath. So judgment always comes before the wrath. So he judges his body so that the world can see the purification of his body with the right attitudes. Again, I, I can only share that the, the last administration, it was the body of Christ's fault. They allowed a, a wicked man to come into office. And all the associates of the deep state, the Luciferians that are anti-American. Let me tell you, the Democratic Party is anti-American. Does everybody understand it? They are for open borders. They are one world promoters. I, I don't understand how any Democrat could make it to heaven. Does everybody understand that? Why? Because they promote what? Same-sex marriage, which God disapproves of. They promote abortion, which God disapproves of. I, I don't understand. But that's where they're caught up in that doctrine. They may know the Lord, but they can't know the Lord. They may know his name, Jesus, but they don't know him. Because if they knew him, they wouldn't be approving of the things that they promote. Amen? Amen? That's reality. Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. 1 Peter chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 6, 1 Peter 1, verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been what? Grieved by various trials. That what? The genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by what? Fire may be found to the praise and honor and the glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy unexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls, the genuineness of your faith, or in the genuineness of your heart, your character, your connection, the genuineness of your attitude, your desires. God's checking out whether you are truly genuine or you're a pretender. Amen? One or the other. Isaiah 48, verse 10. And then one more scripture. Isaiah 48, verse 10. Glory. Trials of purification. In verse 10, it says, Behold, I have what? Refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the what? Furnace of what? Affliction. The furnace of affliction is trials of purification. It's suffering. It's chastening. Amen? Anybody ever been rejected? Anybody ever been offended? What did you do with it? He wants to know if you would do what he did. Really nothing. Pray and bless him. 
Amen? Unless he directs you in another way, but it's not going to be vengeful. I can tell you that. He's going to tell you, why don't you bless them? Forgive them. And I'll throw coals on them. You know? So you got to understand something. When people mess with you, they mess with him. You don't have to do nothing. Amen? Amen. <laughs> You got to forgive, you bless them. Let God take care of it. And don't wait. The quicker you do it, the less you react. Because reaction brings what? Repeat. Revelation 3. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. Revelation 3, verse 14. And to the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need nothing. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. That's a rebuke. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire. That you may be what? Rich in white garments. That you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. And as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. And to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So we want to overcome all of our trials. Amen. Every one of us goes through it. And then goes through it. Then goes through it. Then goes through it. Until there's no more through it. You home. Amen. Amen. Just remember he's with us and not against us. And we want to get to a place where he earns our trust. If you react or repeat. If you respond, you advance. Amen? Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Obviously, you told us this because of something either coming up or what we're in right now. So prepare us. <laughs> Remind us of what you said tonight. Holy Spirit, quicken us to this. Seal it with the blood of Jesus and let it grow and bear fruit into every part of our members. In Jesus' name. Amen.